and hear a word from on high. Oh God, we need your spirit. We need your wisdom. And we need your revelation. Come now, oh God. Bless us with your presence. Bless us with your power. And bless us with your promises. Have your way, O oh Lord. Hide me behind that old rugged cross. Less of me and more of you. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. My Lord, my Redeemer. Christ, we pray. Amen. Ushers, you, need, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. and I'm not going to say it. I'm just going to have to show you this time. Our scripture text has been read. But let me lift up for today's thought, Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Focusing on thir 28 and 31. 28 through 31. Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard? That the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. I want to talk to you briefly this morning from the subject, recognizing the power of God. Uh, you have to understand, beloved, that ignorance is not an excuse to not knowing the power of God. You can no longer hide behind the phrase, I, I never knew. You can no longer hide behind the mass of, of, of ignorance when it's concerning how good God has been to you in your life. All you have to do is... Look back over your life and realize that if it had not been for the Lord, it wasn't you who woke yourself up this morning, it was God. It wasn't you who put the food in your refrigerator and your cupboard, it was God. It was not you who dressed so well that you uh, uh, did well on the interview and got the job, it was God. God was the supplier and is the supplier of all the blessings that are bestowed upon your life. You can't hide behind the fact that you don't know when God says in his word, everybody shall know who I am. Jeremiah 33, 31 says you don't have to tell anyone that they need to know the Lord, for they all shall know me from the littlest one to the oldest. They shall know that I am their God, and they shall be my people. He says that he's going to write it upon the hearts, and everybody will know. So we cannot hide behind the ignorant uh, idea and proposition uh, that no one has told you. Here in our text, Judah allowed their ignorance to blind uh, them from recognizing the sovereignty and the power of God. You have to understand, beloved, that when you are consumed uh, by your circumstances, you fail uh, to identify the resources that God has provided for you. It is amazing to me, my brothers and sisters, how people call themselves Christians, yet they cannot recognize the power of God moving in not only their life, but someone else's life. It, 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 it behooves me, my brothers and sisters, that, that we are bind, binded by ignorance, uh, that we cannot see God moving even in his creation. Uh, 
The birds never complain when the storm comes. Uh, the trees never stop giving God praise when there's a wind. But yet here we are, God's creation. Uh, think it robbery to give God praise for what God has already done. It's interesting, my brothers and sisters, that you can't get no amens or hallelujahs or thank you, Jesus, from folk who claim to be Christians. It, it, it behooves me that, 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 that no matter how uh, prophetic the word of God goes forth, those who call themselves Christians have the propensity to keep their mouths shut as though God has never done nothing for them. I just stopped by here briefly to tell somebody you better recognize the power of God before it's too late. You better recognize that God is the Alpha and the Omega before it's too late. You better recognize that God is the only one that shall supply all of your needs before it's too late. You better recognize that if it had not been for God on your side, those things that you went through would have killed you. You better recognize that there's a power greater than you. And that was the problem with Judah. They, they forgot that God was the God who delivered them out of the hands of Pharaoh. They forgot that God was the God who made ways out of no way. They forgot that God was the Alpha and the Omega. They forgot that they was to worship God with all of their heart, all of their mind, and all of their soul. And, and as a pending result, uh, 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 Isaiah prophesied that there will become a time where you're going to remember because you'll be in captivity. Uh, isn't it funny, my brothers and sisters, we know the Lord when we get in trouble. Uh, we know how to pray when things don't go our way. Uh, isn't it funny, my brothers and sisters, as soon as uh, uh, we get a bad report, that's when we pray morning, noon, and night. But let things go good in our life. We can't get some to even just call upon the name of the Lord. And that's the main idea of this text this morning uh, when Judah gets to know God in an intimate way Isaiah reminds them that they will discover that there's a power that lies within them that they can overcome every calamity they face and I just want to stop by here and encourage somebody this morning under the sound of my voice that there is something that's inside of you when you have an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ uh, that will defy everything that you go through. Uh, there's something inside of you that no matter how many hills you have to climb, you will have strength to endure. There's something that's inside of you. Don't matter how many people scandalize your name or how many people talk about you. That there's something inside of you that will encourage you to keep pressing toward the mark of the high call. And all you have to do is uh, make an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ your sole purpose in life. And here, Isaiah asked the question, hast thou not known? In other words, this is the rhetorical question that Isaiah asked because Isaiah knows that they knew. And Isaiah knew that, that, that their actions did not line up with the God that they were supposed to serve. Uh, you don't have to look at me cricket out funny. You know God as well. But some of us, our actions don't line up with the word and the will of God. And so the prophet stands before them and said, Have thou known? Hast thou not heard? That the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainted not. In other words, uh, uh, he's telling you to stop complaining about what you are going through. Because the God you serve uh, never faints. You have to understand what faints mean. Faints mean in the Greek that, that God will never lose courage. 
And no matter what uh, you have to go through, you serve a God that doesn't look at the odds, saying that the odds are stacked up against you. But what God looks at is those calamities and say, this is the right opportunity for my name to get the glory. In other words, beloved, if you find yourself going through trouble, if you find yourself going through a storm, don't uh, uh, talk about uh, the storm as if it's a problem. Talk about the storm as if it's an opportunity for God to get the glory because if you look at uh, it as it as an opportunity you won't look at it as woe is me you'll stand there with tiptoe anticipation that says that the same God that got me out of the mess last week is the same God that's going to deliver me out of my mess right now we serve a God that does not faint. We serve a God that does not give up on us. We serve a God that never gets tired. We serve a God that never goes to sleep. We serve a God that never lost a battle. And how dare us uh, uh, get to, uh, to a point where we forget about recognizing the power of God in our life. I'm so sick and tired of hanging around folk who claim to be Christians with no power. I'm so tired of hanging around folk who say that they know the word of God, but they are powerless in every situation. I just stopped by to tell somebody we better recognize the power of God because the power of God, when it gets down in our souls, reminds us that trouble don't last always. Uh, when we uh, activate the power of God in our life, we don't have to worry about what things look like because we know that all things shall work out for the good. When we have the power of God inside of us, I don't care what they say. All I'm concerned about what he says. And he says that he shall supply all of my needs. He says when I cry, he shall wipe away all of my tears. He he says in his word that he will not put more on me than I can bear. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, because I got God inside of me, I fear no evil. Why? Because my God never faints, and my God is never weary. Is there anybody here today that's glad that they serve a God that's always on the post? That you're glad that you serve a God that never takes a 15 minute break uh, that you glad that you serve a God uh, that when you call upon his name uh, he's right there uh, ready to see about you uh, I wish I had one or two individuals in here today uh, that had to try God for yourself uh, when your back was against the wall uh, and people ran out on you uh, you fell down on your knees uh, and called on the name of Jesus uh, didn't he show up uh, I wish I had somebody uh, that don't mind testifying that he showed up right on time. And not only do we serve a God uh, that fainteth not, uh, but look what Isaiah says. He says that we serve a God that when things get bad, he gives us power. Y'all don't know when to shout. Y'all don't know when to shout. Y'all don't know when to shout. When, when your back is against the wall, God loves us so much that he gives his power to us. Y'all don't know when to shout. Uh, what are you trying to say? Well, here it is. When you find yourself in a tight situation, you don't have to try to circumvent your exit. All you have to do is tap into the power of of God. Oh, I wish I had a praying church up in here that knows that when you tap into the power of God, that no weapon formed against you will ever prosper. I wish I had a praying church up in here that know that when you tap into the power of God, you tap into God's possibilities. And even though it don't look like things are going to happen because God dwells inside of you, it's got to happen. He says, he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increases strength. <laughs> uh, 
uh, Isaiah had a good way of putting it uh, to us here. And basically what he's saying here is this. When you have done all you can do uh -huh, and you can't go no further, you're in the right place for God to transfer his anointing to you. The reason why some of us cannot get the anointing of God is because we believe that we can do it ourselves. Uh, I'm so sick and tired of super mighty big Christians uh, that want to carry the load all themselves. Uh, sometimes I get tired uh, and sometimes I got to pump my brakes. Uh, and when I pump my brakes, uh, God tells me uh, that when you are weak, uh, then I am made strong. Uh, and I now I understand it now uh, because when I can't go no further I look back and the footprints are bigger than my size 13 I realized I was not moving in my own accord in the first place I was being moved by the power of God and when you realize that you've been moved by the power of God you declare to God whatever you do whatever you send me whatever you're doing in this place I will follow and I will go why because it's not my will but thy will be done good God almighty so he give us power uh, and uh, he gives us strength but he here here it is he throws a monkey rich in here he tells us uh, that even the youth shall faint. Uh, and that's not uh, a physical analogy. We're not talking about little boys and little girls. What he's talking about here in the text uh, are young, weak Christians. Uh, the ones who just came into the fold. Uh, yes, uh, well, they are not, they don't have the experience uh, uh, that a seasoned Christian has. Uh, a seasoned Christian has a testimony. Uh, a seasoned Christian has been through some things in their past but a young Christian who's never gone through nothing when they find their first uh, sign of hell in front of them they're going to get weary because they never experienced God uh, and his power but I just stopped by to tell somebody it's time to grow up from a young child to a seasoned Christian you got to have a testimony because the same God that that raised Jesus from the dead is the same God that will remove that will, that will resurrect uh, your bad days, and that's what Isaiah is saying here in the text. Uh, he says, "Even you shall faint and have weary and get weary, and the young men shall utterly fall, uh, but they that wait on the Lord, come on, uh, come on, come on, Jack, I'm ready to go. But they that wait on the Lord, there's something about waiting uh, that." God is trying to tell you and me uh, that you can't be a seasoned Christian. Uh, you cannot be a mature Christian uh, if you don't have the ability to wait. What is he trying to say? Uh, he's saying uh, it's not on your time uh, but it's on my time. Uh, see, we are chronos. Uh, we tell our watch. Uh, and if the preacher preach over uh, 1 o'clock, you're ready to go. Uh, but the Holy Spirit says, uh, I don't buy uh, chronos times. I'm Cairo's time. I made time before time. And when you talk about waiting, you got to go into Cairo's time. And then you got to stand and wait. I don't care if it doesn't show up right now. You know that God will make a way out of no way. I don't care when the doors might open. You know that the door is going to open sometime because God's going to make a way out of no way. I don't know when my blessing is coming but my Bible says that my blessing is coming uh, with my name on it. If I first seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, uh, that he shall add all things unto me. Uh, so I'm going to wait uh, on the Lord. Uh, because when I wait, uh, I can recognize every movement of God. Uh, I look at the creation and I can see God in the trees. Uh, I can see God in the sky. Uh, I can see see God in the rain when I wait upon the Lord. And that's what Isaiah says. Uh, they shall renew in their strength. They shall mount up like wings on an eagle. And they shall run
run and not be weary. And I wish I had somebody in here that don't mind waiting on the Lord. Because when you wait on God, you can see the blessings of God. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard all oh, what the Lord has in store for you. But you got to recognize. You got to recognize. You got to recognize the power of God. You're probably saying, well, how can I recognize? I've been coming to church, and I believe it don't take all of that. Uh, as long as I come and drop off my envelope, pay my tithes, that should be enough. No, it's not. Those things are good. Bring your money. We'll take it. But I can't promise you into the kingdom of heaven. I can tell you the things of God. But if you cannot recognize it for yourself. I can tell you what the Bible says. But if you do not learn it for yourself. I can tell you the importance of being controlled by the Holy Spirit. But if you're denying the power of the Holy Spirit to work in your life. You can come up to church every Sunday and every Wednesday all you want to. You can be the first one here to unlock the door and to lock the doors. But if you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. All you're doing is going through the motions. And hoping. Hoping by luck or chance. That God forgets about all the hell you raised. We walk around trying to pretend to be Christians. And ain't no good in you. How can you try to control somebody else? You can't even control yourself. The prophet says here, listen here, you better recognize that when God gets on the scene, God commands. He, he doesn't ask. He doesn't suggest. He's not going to plead with you. He's not going to negotiate with you.